There you go. Hit, hit rec the record button on that one there. There we go. Okay. Um, so I didn't come very prepared today, but we're going to do a little talk, a little talk about technology and H&I. Um, I'm not prepared because I have been working 60 plus hours a week. In fact, I was working yesterday till five o'clock yesterday in my hotel room instead of being a part of this here because it's just what I do, unfortunately. My job requires me to take big sacrifices at times. So, um, so I'm a little bit unprepared, but I want to talk a little bit about technology and using technology in H&I. Uh, so those of you who are, have been involved in the regional H&I, um, we actually have phone meetings in between our regions. We actually didn't use a product called Zoom. It's just one of many products. Um, Jay back here has uh, been working PR stuff on another product that, that the region has been working on for, for phone conferences and stuff as well. And uh, so we, we start using phone conferencing systems for the, to, take, to handle the businesses that we cannot handle at region. We only meet four times a year. So there's a lot of stuff that we want to do. We have the bridge program that's going on. We have the reaching out. We have a lot of things that we're, that we're working on in H&I that we need to have discussions about in between. <coughs> we also have a lot of uh, prisons and, and jails that we cannot get into manpower wise we can't get into there it's be we can actually hold meetings with these programs these conference programs and actually hold meetings with it within the uh, facilities um, in fact we will be doing this on Sunday for the Sunday me morning meeting we were, were with two prisons now we've got um, Walker State Prison and Arendelle Lee Arendelle State Prison yes so we, we will actually be doing using this, pro this using Zoom we will be doing the Sunday meeting with those prisons. We did it last year. We're still learning on how to do this year, so, you know, yes, it is. It is awesome. They can hear the Sunday morning speaker. Yes, they can hear the Sunday morning speaker. And this, so this is, this is something that we're learning how to do, and we want to share it with y'all on, on doing this year. It's, um, it's actually quite simple to do, except when you try to do a speaker meeting when you got to try to think, integrate in with all the other stuff that's going on it becomes a little bit more difficult and that's well while well, world's been doing this for what six seven years now mm -hmm. world's been doing it for the last two or three or four worlds they've been doing it carrying it into prisons and we're trying it here and we had three georgia prisons at the last world convention in yes. orlando yeah. that was able to see the yeah. Sunday morning yes. speaker. So we're learning from the world. We're taking, trying to pick what the world has learned and take, try to pick, present it here so that we can do the same thing and take, present it to the Georgia prisons here. And uh, we, I know that East End area has been working on trying to reach out to some of the places they cannot get to do, via phone meetings. Uh, I, is North Atlanta doing the same thing too? Not yet. Not yet, but I know that I've heard that y'all have been talking so about it, right? We've used, uh, I'm Mary Quinn, I'm an addict. We use uh, the Zoom. So, and for those who, of you who aren't aware, the Zoom line is actually provided by our zone, which, which the Georgia region falls into. And so it's actually a service that's provided to us, set up. <coughs> it's amazing. It's not required that an area go and purchase a Zoom product. Nice. It's provided and can be used. Um, but we use it specifically for our subcommittee meetings. Like Jim was saying, you know, it can be a challenge um, to get people to come on out on a Sunday or a Saturday afternoon. Um, and the option to phone into a call, at, you know, whether you're in your car, at the grocery, running errands, whatever, it's just a lot more accessible. Um, but we are, we definitely are looking into that. So, yeah. So, so, uh, so part of what we didn't want to do, want to talk about is how technology can be used. Now, some of the prisons are not going to allow you to see them on their side, but they can see you. Uh, we can set, you can set up with a simple $20, $30 web camera, your laptop, use the Zoom account, dial in there, you can have that web camera. Take, uh, for, for a panel, you can take set up like here, you can set up a little small table here, have a web camera with a panel, somebody controlling it with a computer. I don't know how many of y'all watch YouTube podcasts. They're using basically the same technology. There's just a different program that you're using, but it's, it's the same thing where they didn't do these things here. 
It's just a little web camera that picks up their stuff. There we go. Daisy even got one right here. Yes. $29. $29 on Amazon. Yes, I actually just looked at this here. So that is just $29 on Amazon. This right here, little pot, a little tripod, everything set it up there. It's got a microphone built in it. USB plugs right into your laptop. You can carry on, you can do it. You set up your panel and take, have a meeting within a facility that you cannot physically get into. You know, sometimes it's easier to take have people to, you know, you have people in a, because some of the places you cannot get into physically, they're just not gonna allow us into, unless you go through a bunch of training, but they would, they're more, they were more, they may allow this year. We have, we just did training to, for the Georgia, which uh, Sherry's gonna take talk about a little bit later on, we just did training for the uh, to be able to get into the Georgia State prisons, uh, and uh, so Sherry will talk about that a little bit later on. But we have facilities that are not close to any of us. We have facilities out in the middle of nowhere, and there's nobody close by. Alternate, we have technology to do this year. This is stuff that we couldn't do ten years ago. Well, we could, but it, we, it was expensive and it was hard to do and stuff like. That. But today it's now simple, $29 for, for a webcam. They can do, ha handle all the parts you need to do. So the idea now is just as we get a little bit more technology, a li little bit more technologically advanced here, we can, need to do, we can carry the message in much further ways than we ever could before. So um, I was going to do a demonstration, but I didn't think that was going to, was, would take, work, work very well for the, um, uh, for the uh, microphones here that are going to be picking up here that are for these, this to be recorded. So I said I figured I would at least talk about it and answer any questions that anybody may have about this year. So, um, you know, we, and we, if you want a demonstration, we, we, we can do a demonstration at some other point in time. I can do demonstrations one-on-one, -on -one, whatever, you know, with a group of people. Uh, uh, but uh, we can come out, to, uh, come out to your area and do demonstrations. We would be glad to come out and take a show, uh, show areas on how to use this. Uh, in fact, I'm sure that, uh, oops. Uh, <laughs> I was supposed to have been turned on quiet. I was not supposed to answer. Uh, that was actually registration asking me for some, reg some registrations is what it was. Um, <laughs> uh, so um, the, uh, PR is doing a lot, doing, has been using a lot of technology a lot longer than H&I has. Uh, they, they've been working more towards with some technology and I'm sure that even PR has some, has some uses for some of this technology as well too. So, and, uh, so I don't know what PR is doing in their workshop, so you might want to check out PR, see what they're doing too later on. I think there's, it's after this in here? Yeah, we are behind you guys. Oh, you're behind us. Yes. Wow. I think you guys are, uh, you guys are setting the curve. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's unusual. Uh, Normally, each guy's following the curve. Today, we're setting the curve. That's great. And just to, by a show of hands, how many in this room have either scheduled, logged into, or called into a Zoom meeting in your, in your life? Any form of it. All right. And how many people feel totally startled and like, what is what are they talking about? I have no idea how to ask <laughs> Right. Yeah, that's just that's generally about the average. About fifty percent probably of people are like, Yeah, I do that all the time, like call in, no worries. The other half it's like what the, I we're in Zoom, what are you talking about? Yeah. So just to break it down very simply, Zoom is an application that that facilitates conference and video calls. But the great thing about the conference call aspect is you literally all that you need to do is dial a phone number, and then when they ask, please enter the code, you enter a code and hit pound, and you're in the meeting. The interesting thing that I found is that we can sit in here and see one another and almost subconsciously iterate the atmosphere of recovery. It's a little bit more challenging when you can't see the other people on the call. 
you know, crosstalk not on purpose just tends to happen when a question's posed and then three or four people shout out. So utilizing, um, utilizing the actual web gives us an opportunity to kind of regulate that a bit more. Right. And so Zoom also allows you not just to use your, uh, your a video web camera or your camera on your phone. You can actually call into it if you don't have a camera phone. Allows you to take call into those conferences and hold those just as if you were in a conference call. Otherwise, it's it marries a whole bunch of technologies together: uh, the phone, the, the webcam, and stuff like that, and conferencing. So, um, it's and it's just one of many programs, but it is provided for us by the by the Zonal Forum, so that they they provide us with the the, the Zoom, so we don't have to pay for it. Plus, the region also the region H and I also has their own Zoom account as well. Um, what is it? I apologize. I was having trouble running the link. What are you using it for? So we right now. So Sunday, we will be doing a, we will doing the Sunday meeting to, through two state prisons right now. We'll be doing the Sunday meeting to sta two state prisons using Zoom. We have in between our rep quarterly meetings, we also have additional meetings that we take do conference calls on for, as well. And this is one of the one of the things where we can get to to prisons and, and, and facilities that, we, that we're not able to physically get into, we can get into them with conference calls and, and get into the, uh, and carry prisons. Uh, Emanuel and, and uh, Emanuel State Prison and Hancock State Prison are the two beta prisons that we're gonna try this with, but we need manpower. Yeah. And Jim touched on manpower. Yeah. Um, it's still, they still have to go through an H&I training you know, to get orientated, all of this, yeah. especially to do a webinar meeting, you know, because the do's and don'ts are still going to apply, even though you're not going in to the facility, you're just doing it on a screen yeah. with the state prisons. This is unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Yes. So we've got two two prisons that are ready and willing. As soon as we gonna, get the manpower. Well, good. Yeah, yeah. we've got it. And the nice thing better, about it. We've got a process. Yeah. That and, and the, men. Yeah. And nice thing about it is you do not have to be in the area where the where the facility is at. If North Atlanta has a bunch of manpower and they and they don't have a prison to do, they could do Emmanuel. Yeah. You know, or you know, or if Midtown has a bunch of people that are willing to do something, they don't have a prison they do, they can they can do Arendelle or something like that. You know, you don't have to be physically located near a place in order to do an H and I meeting now. Uh, yes, Gary. Is there a way, instead of an area doing it, because it's so hard to get people to do things, have you thought about having a forum where you may have somebody from North Atlanta, someone from East End, and somebody from Northeast it Georgia that's available? Have that it, yes. And that's exactly how we need it to happen, because yeah. we don't have the manpower it showing right. up. Right. And in yeah. each area, there's limited resources. Right. And for Arendelle State Prison, which we are in currently in discussions to start the first women's meeting in the state of Georgia, the trusted servants who have been come to region to get badge, AKA they've done the training with the Georgia Department of Corrections, are from many areas. And so we've kind of decided that it makes the most sense to take the areas off and to let the trusted servants who can come at a regional level, Jay, who's our PR chair, We'll be, we'll be having a meeting actually following up to discuss how we're gonna use PR and H&I at Region to go in to create the initial relationship with the facility and then set up to do monthly meetings. Because sometimes when you're going to, I don't know, it's in Alto. Is anyone from Alto, Georgia? Right, we, no one's from there. So the, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. So a weekly meeting, that's not sustainable, it's not practical. So we'll start out with a monthly meeting. That will equal that the trusted servants who sign up go four times <coughs> a year. So it's really something that something that we can all actually do and keep up. I'm so excited about this because I travel for work so it's hard for me to do. This I can do wherever I am on the road. Yeah, you can. Yes. You can. Oh, I want to talk to you after the summer. Yes, Barbara, you had. Okay, um, so once it was started, set up and everything, all the trusted servants still would need to have with GBOT badge? Yes. For webinar meetings, no. They do not have to be badged really? to do a webinar meeting. No. They still need to go through the H&I training. Right. 
I don't think they have, because they're not physically they're going not into physically the facility, going they don't the need a badge. Right. Wow. Um, something and it's going to be a process yeah. for us to get the guidelines prepared, yeah. but this is where we're at. We're in those discussions <laughs> on, hey, we can do this. Georgia Department of Corrections is on board with it. Mm -hmm. And so now, you know, it's just a matter of coming up with the guidelines because it's new. It's yeah. brand new and it's technology yeah. based and it's... Wow. Exciting. And, and as far as as far as we're aware, no other region is doing this yet. As far as we're aware, it doesn't mean that there's another region. World only started doing it for for the uh, for the conventions just a few years back. So we're, we're we picked up from there, and we're trying to learn. So at some point in time, this is going to grow on to other regions as well. So, yes. Hey, I'm not putting Lori. Um, so do these Lord. facilities still request that you be have a background check? I mean, even though you're not physically going in there, you're still communicating with well, prisoners. Well, when we communicate with them, that's when we find out. You know, and it's just like any other facility we take to communicate with. We still have to find out what their rules are. We still have to operate within their rules. Uh, their rules are more important than our rules right now, because <laughs> there are some. They they will have restrictions. You know, we can only operate in, within their rules. Now we have to still follow our traditions and our concepts, but their rules actually, you know, we're, they're, they're the ones that are allowing us into their place. So uh, we have to follow their rules. So th there are some that may disallow us in there. I know that there are a couple of uh, jails and prisons right now that, uh, that we've had meetings in right now that are extremely restrictive of who's allowed in there. Uh, Easton's got one right now that is extremely restricted. They allow two people. They've only allowed two, three people. Has only been allowed in this prison now for the last 20 years, and that, they're that re, they're that restrictive is because that's just the way they run their prison. You, they just do not allow anybody else to come in there. And if you want to be part of that group that comes into that prison, you go through a lengthy process to be even allowed to get in there, and you have to be in with the people who are already in there. They just don't allow it. It's just every place is completely different. So mm -hmm. we and just have to deal with it. Have you considered having backup people? Because I'm sitting here going, well, if somebody can't make it to an H&I meeting, Lori was like frantically texting people, can you make it somebody canceled? Are you going to have a backup list? Because I would imagine you have to have a minimum amount of people even for a Zoom yeah. meeting. Yeah. We so would, it's we like start with amendment of yeah. three. That way, if one person can't make it, you still have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. First, and we yeah. do that for accountability yeah. purposes Jay? as well. Yeah, I'm from public relations. I'm actually the social facilitator, so uh, we want to work with H and I to come up with helping support the list. The truth is, when Jim started as a facilitator with H and I, that was the opening when we had somebody that was technologically open to this concept, right? And they, and H and I have been the only part of the We try to use a free solution, but it really hasn't been stable enough with the product and end up making just as much demand for it. Zoom has been what the whole uh, fellowship of NA has sort of, uh, there's a consensus to use it. And you're right, if you participate in Zoom, you do have to participate first before you can get login credentials. Mm -hmm. But uh, they have a bunch of rooms, uh, they're called, and they, they pay for the account. So what we want to do for PR work with H and I to help them come up with that list because we actually haven't really used the technology successfully on our own. H and I is our pioneer. And uh, and Zonal is interested in what uh, Georgia H and I is doing and so is World. World's aware of it too. Yeah. This is all very new but you guys really are the pioneers in the technology. Yeah. Thank you. So 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 as 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 we learn here, you know, this will eventually go into the stuff that we learn will eventually end up in the H and I handbook on how to take, handle these kind of things. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I don't know if, if, how many of y'all have seen that have actually looked at and read the H and I handbook. That all the stuff that's in the H and I handbook has been done from p people who have gone before and created that H and I handbook. I was part of the the the, the uh, oh I'm going to run out of time right now. I part of I was part of the 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 the, the uh, whenever they were writing the PR and H and I handbooks many years ago, actually it was PI back then when I was involved in it, and uh, the right the, the the original PI handbook, it was a, from a lot of experience that we had from the people who did it. 
that take, created those things. And as we gain, gain experience in different new grounds here, we need to move into those. So, so that's basically where we're at in technology here, where we're moving forward here with this year. And the next step will be Sherry for talking about the uh, dealing with the uh, Georgia Department of Corrections. Hey y'all, I'm truly excited. I am not gonna be able to stay sitting down for this. So um, it's an exciting time in Narcotics Anonymous H&I. And I hope that you have somebody from your area coming to Region H&I. We have turned into a project-based committee. Um, we want to take on projects and tasks for completion. Um, we, we have found that the area H&I chairs, they are accountable to their area. They need to give their report to their area. Region is where we want to help educate them, help them learn, help them grow, help them start new things in H&I. Um, so we don't, we don't do reports anymore at H&I Region. We come and brainstorm what project do we want to get done. And when we started this, this fiscal year, which started in June, we had 10 tasks that, needed to, that we wanted to see happen. One, to have a Georgia Department of Corrections training, one to be project-based committee, uh, task-based. Um, well, there were several things to ha start having webinar meetings in between region, since we only meet four times a year. So we have completed seven of those tasks that were on the 10 list. Uh, I'm just saying, like this is an exciting, exciting time. We had a Georgia Department of Corrections training held at region in December. How many people attended that? All right. Awesome. So hopefully you have followed through and got your badge if you were approved. This says Georgia Department of Corrections volunteer. And the Georgia State Prisons require you to have that to go in now. And there's also an application online, but you still need to do the four hour training. Um, they also have a locator badge that you will get. So you can be located while you're there. And it's It's our biggest opportunity um, to get into these prisons. If your area continues to say, we need to start here, we need to get in here, we need to do that. Mary Quinn touched on it. These prisons are way out in the middle of nowhere. We cannot expect that three people from one area can go and serve that. So we want to, one person like in Lee Arendelle, North Atlanta is gonna come help uh, Northeast Georgia. And if extreme Georgia wants to come, extreme Northern, uh, if they want to come down, you know, we now have six women to serve a women's facility in Alto, Georgia. And badge, took the training and got their badges. And we have been attempting this since I was this region's H and I chair, because um, we did a training back then too. Hundred people in the room, seven people got their badges. So we have made progress because this time, how many was it, 43? Yeah. 43 people out of 52 people in the room got their badges. Yeah. And so it's an exciting, exciting time. Um, we need more. There's 33 state prisons in Georgia. Can y'all guess how many we actually take an H&I meeting into? Actually, six. Six out of 33. There's 150,000 inmates that are not getting Residence. a meeting. Residents. <laughs> I was an inmate. Now they're gracious and call them residents. We're respectful. I was an inmate, so. <laughs> Y'all called me an inmate. Um, Well, no, it, Georgia Department of Corrections training is done by Georgia Department of Corrections. Oh, you, yeah. you can go in and do your application on their website, gdoc.gov, and look for volunteer, and then do the application. And then once you get the application in, they can tell you when the next training is going to be. Yeah. The trainings are held in Forsyth, which is close to region, but they're held at all different times because 
we're not the only people in there when they held it, held it at Tifton College. They, there's religion, there's music, there's arts, there's uh, NA, there's AA, and there'll be 200 people in the room, and maybe five will be NA. And that's the, the sad statistics. So we need y'all to spread the word. You can do this. You know, we have contact information to find out when the next trainings will be, so you can attend. Sign on the sign-up sheet. Yeah, sign on the sign-up sheet, and we can send you the information for that. Um, do not mistake what I'm saying. You, if you go through this avenue of getting to the training and, you know, um, doing the application, you still need to be involved with your area H&I. If you are not involved in your area H&I and you have not done our orientation, then you're not going to get to go in because we will have that facility lift for them. Um, you know, it's, it's important that we understand the prison may say, oh, men and women can come and do the meeting. H&I guidelines, we don't do that, you know? We just don't do that. So they may be able to say, you know, I don't know, just different things. Uh, you know, no officer has to be in the room. Like H&I has its own guidelines on that. Yeah, you can go by you yourself. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, they'll, the facility will say, oh, we just need one, you can bring in one person. Just one person. <laughs> you can do the meeting like that. We don't do that. So you still have to follow your H&I do's and don'ts. And, um, but it's an exciting, exciting time. We have 43 badged members right now. We need more. Yes? Um, what about Matt? Hey. Hey. Uh, is there an application? Um, is there an application fee? No. There is not. No, no Georgia Great Department question. of Corrections, when you apply online, and they give you a badge. It says volunteer on there. You are considered a volunteered employee. Okay. So we don't have to pay and they will do background checks to make sure you don't have any outstanding stuff. You know, just a couple of other things that I want to touch on is that we have made so much progress in these past few years, you know, in reaching out publication, um, reaching out, who's familiar? Okay, who has submitted their story for publication? Yes, yeah. Yes. Right. Can you see what the, that is for those of us? Who reaching know? out is a publication that if you're incarcerated six months or longer, you get it free. You get it free. So it has a sign-up form on the back. We're trying to get these in every prison. So they can sign up, send it to World, and they get the subscription for free. And, what are the and it has three different sections. It has from the inside, and it's where the residents write in. And, you know, um, my name, they don't give names, of course. My name is C.A.F., a recovering addict, clean for one year, 11 months, and five days. Incarcerated. Um, I'm doing in the penitentiary in Brazil for another one year and 11 months. But even being on the inside, my heart remains serene because the NA program gives me strength to continue my journey and prepare myself for life on the outside. Like this is what the residents are writing in about. And these are stories that are very touching. Um, they can get it, it's an international program and it goes into international prisons as well. The second section, um, well, and they also have uh, art from the inside. So they do NA logos. They do all kinds of stuff, NA. And they put them in here when it's submitted by residents. Yeah. I mean, it's got H&I on that. I hope y'all can get one of these after and you'll get to see it. Um, in fact, if, if you want to yeah, have some out there, Jim. Um, that way you can see it. And then we also have a section from the outside. And this is where your experience is what they need to hear. There's simple guidelines to follow, you know. Um, you, you know, got arrested, you went to jail, you got clean, you went to NA meetings inside, or they didn't have NA meetings inside, because that's pretty popular theme. Um, 
you got out, you started going to NA, and now you're clean and carrying a meeting into your local jail or your local prison. Um, they need to hear your experience, strength, and hope. And then now we have a new section transitioning to the out outside. So someone newly getting out um, can write in and share what they did in their first 30, 60, 90 days so that they didn't go back to using. And so this is an excellent publication. You can also get it electronically and it comes out quarterly. And I was on the World Board Reaching Out Committee for four years. Um, well, I wish I could still be on it, only they only allow, you know, four years and then you're, you're done. Um, but it's on under their publications link on na.org and you can go in and get the, the quarterly subscription emailed to you. So, and then just simply write your story and send it in. Yeah, we, um, have, we just yeah. had somebody published, didn't we, on the latest? Yeah, yep. Yes, we have someone in the latest one? Well, in the Hope Shots. Well, I sent in all the Hope you Shots did? that we did in the workshop awesome. in December. Yes. We did Hope Shots too, and, or in September, <laughs> um, where we had everybody take a card and write something hopeful so these residents could see it. And I sent it to World Narcotics Anonymous H&I, and, and they put it in. And what they said was, I'm in the Georgia region, and I'm, you know, at the doing H&I, and I want to let you know that I, I got out, and I stayed clean, and now I get to carry the message. And they printed that in the reaching out. And what we called it was a hope shot. Yeah. And it was one of our workshops in September. And, you know, it, the annual region in September is their anniversary event and we get to do an extra workshop. Yeah. So awesome, awesome, awesome. That got published and it was just put it on a little like um, note, card. note card and world printed it. Um, so it, it's pretty awesome. We also have the hospitals and institution basic pamphlet. Um, we have just a few here so you can get one after. But if you're not familiar with H&I, it does talk about meeting presentation format, um, who's best suited to carry H&I, the do's and don'ts are even in here. Of course, your local area may have different or additional do's and don'ts. Yeah. So that's a really good pamphlet, good resource. Um, we also have H&I and the NA member, our original H&I pamphlet. We have the H&I handbook. Um, it's also online that you can get. The pamphlets that we take in are staying clean on the outside, gives them suggestions on what to do. We don't, we don't take in a whole lot of literature. There's very basic literature that we take in, little white booklets and staying clean on the outside and welcome to NA are a few of them. Um, but staying clean on the outside is gonna give them everything to do. Don't use no matter what, go to an NA meeting, ask your higher power to keep you clean today. Call your sponsor, read any literature, talk to other recovering addicts, work the 12 steps. And what we found is that they need to get to a meeting on the first day out. Yeah. Um, sure, and then do 90 and 90. Can, can, if our area funds this, or is, does H&I allow this? I mean, it seems to me that this would kind of be a no-brainer that we should be bringing these in so they can even find out about Well, it. if you're in a county jail, Right. Like they have to be incarcerated six months or longer, and what you'll find is that a lot of a lot of uh, county jail residents aren't usually there longer than six months. Right. So, yeah, um, you know, yeah. if you're serving a prison or you're not able to serve a prison, it's something you can take to that prison and say, "We have this," 100%. and the prison can even order a subscription to get them hard copy. I order a subscription every year. It's only 38 bucks, I think. And you get 20 copies every quarter. Yeah. And um, so I order them myself. And that's how we get all of these um, here. Yeah. Point on that one. Uh -huh. The one thing I would say is these are obviously, if you're, ser if you're currently serving a facility and you're like, oh my God, that's the best idea. I should take this in. It is requisite that we speak with the facility first sure. yeah. to make sure they're okay. For example, the yeah. Versailles County Jail, they can't have loose paper. Right. So we couldn't take this in. We take a book, yeah, who knows why that's different. Place. Each facility's different. Yeah. Yeah. Would this be helpful to some, because the other thing I was thinking is, 
Would it be helpful to have it in meetings if somebody's just getting out of a long-term prison? That's a great idea. To be able to and then they can the write outside. in a story of transitioning and how they're staying clean. Yeah, that's a yeah. great idea. Look at this and then get some ideas. Because this one has how do you practice spiritual principles. And I'm like, I don't, I've don't. i never, thank God, been right. in prison. But I would think that, I mean, I, I need to read this. Yeah, I've yeah. never been. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. think maybe it would be good, be good to have it in the meeting. It's an exciting time. There's so much to do, y'all. This is amazing. So much to do. And, you know, what we really need is for y'all, if you see somebody wearing an h and shirt, take a picture of it. Send it to us. We will get it to the world uh, H&I so they can put it in this publication. Because we've had T-shirts put in here um, from the Georgia region. Uh, my sponsor's husband had one from 20 years ago. And every time I see pictures of T-shirts, I take them and I send them in, and they get published. Yeah. So it's really cool. Um, and then uh, at World Convention, like there were tons from like Brazil and Japan and Thailand and all these places wearing H&I t-shirts. And I was just taking them, taking them, taking them, and I sent them all in. And the other publication that we have for residents behind the walls, um, really good pub publication. Just comes, it gives them some information as well. Share some experience um, with other residents. And lastly, because we're, I'm running out of time, yeah. and we have a super, super fun game for y'all to play after this. This is one of the applications for the Georgia Department of Corrections. So it's probably, six pages. No, nah, I would say more like 10 pages. Ten pages um, it, goes with your personal data. You're going to talk about any and everything. Um, <laughs> your personal data, because they're going to do a background check. And then this is saying that you agree to be a correctional associate. When you're a volunteer for the Georgia Department of Corrections, you are an employee. You don't get paid. You don't get paid, but you are an employee. <laughs> you are a state employee. Yeah. Then you have a form that you request for your identification card. And then you have a form that says you will uh, abide by the PREA Act, which is Prison Rape Elimination Act. Um, so if we see something, we do say something if somebody is being abused. Um, and you, as a volunteer, need to help with that. Um, not only just for the residents, but I mean, if you know, like we just need to make sure that the behavior that's happening in our meetings when we carry them in um, is appropriate. The next thing that you have is the um, sexual harassment that you have to sign. So we don't go in there and we don't, you know, it's in our H&I guidelines. We don't ask anybody for a date. We don't do any of that. You cannot do any sexual harassment. That's great stomping ground. <laughs> so you, these are all the things that the Georgia Department of Correction requires, and it's very serious. When you take this training, they are going to be very, very serious about PREA and the sexual harassment. Yeah. You will not get approved if you do not sign these two sheets. Yeah. They are very, very serious about these. Um, Employee standards of conduct. You are going to carry yourself in a professional manner. You will sign this, and if you don't, you'll get kicked out. Yeah. So um, they're not going to basically they're employee standards. You also have to take dress appropriately. Yeah. <laughs> and then oh, yeah. Um, yeah. this is where they take your uh, driving and other criminal background checks. You have to approve that you're going to do that. And this one is for infectious disease. Um, they are not requiring us to do tuberculosis tests or anything like that right now and I doubt they ever will because they have hundreds of thousands of uh, volunteers um, but airborne infections, bloodborne infections um, you know if you come in contact with any blood in the facility you probably want to get tested in any way um, but make sure that this is going to be another form that you have to fill out so it's not your typical H&I application, yeah. um, but it's very, very important that you take it seriously. Yeah. And, you know, if you take the four-hour training, you know, we need uh, Narcotics Anonymous to 
be perceived as a viable program to carry a message of recovery. So it's very important when they're doing these trainings and you're sitting in there for four hours that you allow the instructor to speak and then when they call for questions, then you ask questions. Um, not in the middle of or interrupting them or anything like that. So it's very, very important to have respect for the trainer because they're giving up their four hours on probably their regular day off to do this training. So um, it's an exciting time. It's an exciting time. We have 43 badge members right now. And we need this, more. Yes, we do. So we need more. Did we, have, did we have what, 50 some odd people, 50? 52. We have 52 people who went through training. We have 43 badge members as a result of that. And just sort of an example of where we are today, from 10 years ago when we did this training with over 100 people, there were seven people badged from that one because they did not follow through afterwards. It's not like the Georgia Department does not yeah. want us in there. They do want us they in there. Are they are begging, begging us, us to be to in, there. in there. Begging yes, us. They're begging us to be in there. So, I mean, when we did this year, 10 years ago, we got seven people badged. Now we have 43 people badged. And they think badged. we have no consistency, that yeah. we're not going to show up because of what happened last uh, 10 years ago. And yeah. that's okay, because today we can shift we're, that paradigm. Yes, yes we can. So we, we can yeah. look at what so, happened before, but as we all know, and they're begging us we're to they're begging us. So we're trying to, we want to carry this on, continue this on. We want more people. We will... We are going to try to again at some point in the future do a large workshop again. To try to do for a bit more training again at some point in the future. We've now got new contact. We now have with the with with the uh, with the, the department. Now we have new contact again, and we're so we're going to be working on that there. So point in the future for those of you who have not been through training and don't want to go to Forsyth to do it for with everybody else, we're going to do it again for Narcotics Anonymous. So. And then we're going to move on here now. Awesome. All right. Good job, you guys. Two okay. facts on paper about what we just said. If you're wondering, three years off papers, that's the minimum viable. So three years off papers is if you're passing that on to your area as they get prepared. Um, and the other is that for anyone who's OCD, they did tell me that the corrections facilities are incredibly clean. So... You sign these bloodborne things, but like it's pretty clean. Oh yeah, it's so a matter. Who has read the H and I handbook? Who right. feels like an expert on the H and I handbook? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got competition. <laughs> and this is time to wake up <laughs> to the winner. Exactly. So we no. we have a game. <laughs> Every touch. So this is <laughs> trivia time. Every question in here is taken out of the H and I handbook, and the way this will work. So I'll read the question. There are four multiple choice answers. Here's a couple you can't cheat things. You cannot just raise your hand before you hear the answer. Right? You gotta wait for the answer. But the first one, I know, it's, it's crazy how people can cheat. I didn't even know. But, um, but once all the answers are ready, if you know the answer, raise your hand. Sherry will call first person with their hand up. You read the answer. And then if you win, you get a sticker. Actually, and you, yeah, an H and I and an NA sticker. Wow. You can put on whatever you want. You get a combo. It's pretty bomb. Right? So you should get excited right now. Yeah. I will tell you. All right. Ready? Ready for this? All right. Question number one. Who, who developed the H&I Handbook? A. WSC H&I Committee based on extensive input from H&I subcommittees throughout the world. B. WHC H&I Committee without extensive input from H&I subcommittees throughout the world. C, not the WHC H&I Committee, but only H&I subcommittees throughout the world. Or D, Kanye. <laughs> 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 well, I, I think he was first. Okay. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Go for it. I'm going to say, I'm Steven, I'm an addict, and I will say A, right? Bing, bing, yes. winning. So, to circle back on right. that, as was previously said, this did filter through 
our world, but it was input came directly from all the subcommittees around the world. Number two, what's the purpose of an H&I meeting? A, to carry DNA message of recovery to people who don't know if they are addicts but might be interested in finding out. B, to carry the NA message of recovery to addicts who have full access to regular NA meetings. C, to carry the NA <coughs> message of recovery to addicts who do not have full access to regular NA meetings. Or D, to carry a mixed message of recovery to addicts who do not have full access to regular NA meetings. <laughs> Barbara? No, Aaron. Karen. Okay. Karen, I'm sorry. Huh? C. C is nailing it. You're awesome. <laughs> Woo so that is to carry the to carry meetings to individuals who do not have regular meeting access to <laughs> meetings. And Jay, no cheating. That's the reason why you lost. All right, number three. <laughs> Y'all, you can know this answer going fast. Is an H and I meeting always held under the auspice of an H and I subcommittee? A, yes, or it's not an H&I meeting. B, no, H&I meetings sprout from the ground like corn and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> C, wow. No, H&I meetings can be started by one person and a basic text. <laughs> D, yes, but only if there's a regular meeting already in the meeting location. A. Nailing it, yep, that's right. All right. <laughs> So when there is not a, a meeting already existing in that location, that's where we, we migrate over and partner with PR. And public relations will help us to develop that relationship. Um, all right. Number four. Uh, four. Are all H&I meetings closed to outside participation? A, yes. B, no. C, only if there's no one else available to carry the meeting. And D, not unless everyone there is dressed in a theme, like they're all wearing pink lady jackets. Jay, which answer? I think it's uh, B, right? Yeah. No. A. <laughs> yes. Yes. H&I meetings are, are, are always closed to outside participation. What that means is there's no half H&I meetings. So it's not like, well, H&I comes in, but it could, you know, everybody else could come too. Oh, you mean public. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, you still have a chance, Jay. <laughs> What's the purpose of an H&I panel? A, to convert everyone in the room to the NA way of life. <laughs> oh, yeah. B, simply to introduce those present to some of the basics of the NA program. C, Decide who has the best chance and make sure they get a sponsor. <laughs> D, to share about each and every one of the 12 steps and 12 traditions at every meeting. What about the constant? B. Right. Nailing it. Yes. Glory. All right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Awesome. All right. Uh, we're moving along, you guys. Number eight. How does an H&I subcommittee get literature for meetings? A, the area writes a blank check that the subcommittee fills in when they make the order. B, the subcommittee gets literature from the area lit chair or gets reimbursed. C, the subcommittee orders it directly from the publisher where it's made. That way it's fresh. D, the area puts an undisclosed amount of cash in a bag and passes it to the Adam. Adam. I would like to answer B as in boy. Yes. That is right. Oh, yes. no. We love our lady. Thank you, Adam. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Should we encourage people with special needs to take part in H&I meetings? A, no. B, yes, but only those who are volunteering. C, yes, but only the residents. Or D, yes, both residents and volunteers should take part if they like. D. Yep, that's it. 
Absolutely. And just to give you a little idea, you know, there are times when we need people with disabilities to help us in very specific ways. You know, if there is an individual in a meeting uh, who is who is uh, hearing, impaired. hearing impaired, someone who can sign can carry the message in a way that those of us who don't know that language can't. Uh, you, language support is another great one there. You know, we've been getting requests for Spanish basic text. Uh, all right, 15, H and I can provide other services as well as panel meetings. Which of this list are the three services we do not provide? Which of, out of this list are the three services we do not provide? This is hard. There's going to be three in this that I read. So we don't provide these. Literature to facilities. Transportation to meetings after someone gets out. WSO approved tapes or CDs. Serial publications can be read but not used at meetings. <coughs> Pen pals or jail mail. Coordinate meetings through the HI subcommittee. Coordinate meetings through one person who keeps showing up week after week. There's three right answers in that. There's three right answers. Uh huh. And the uh yeah, take the uh oh my god. Uh huh. You've got it. Uh, You're there. That was the one. Yeah, the recorded thing. The pen 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 we're gonna, so it's gonna be a quick response, either do or don't, right? We do do this or we don't do this. But you gotta raise your hand, otherwise it's just gonna be real loud. Yeah. Okay, adolescents. The following statements are the do's and don'ts for adolescents. In this lightning round, we'll go from uh, individual, you must tell me whether this is a do or a don't. A, remember that this is a we program. No addict should feel that he, she is being preached to. Shout out. Do. Yep, nailed it. Do it. All right. Use profanity. Don't. Chris. Don't. Awesome. Chris. Remember that an addict is an addict regardless of age. In the back with the glasses. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's true. They are an addict. You're right. Okay. Tell them that there is fun in recovery, i.e. social events, fellowships. Lori, do. Awesome. Compare your bottom to theirs. No. Blue shirt. Don't do it. Awesome. Acknowledge and validate their clean time. Jason. Do. Woo! Awesome. Glorify your past. Don't. Don't. Say, Hold up, slow, 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 let her get a caught up here. Awesome. Right. Uh, I'm not that quick. Back row, y'all better bust up. You want me to take out the last one? Right here. I know, they're busy. Back row. Back row's busy having a discussion. Back row, reading an article. All right. Um, this is a good one. Say, I feel like I'm talking to my kids. <laughs> Barbara, don't, don't do it. Oh. Um, Acknowledge and validate their feelings and emotions. Do, do. do it, yes. yes right. Great, right here with the headphones. The headphones there. Yeah, give, give it to somebody else. No, and I then, all right, here's a great one. Patronize oh, adolescents. What? What? what was that? Patronize adolescents. Don't. Don't do it. All right, good lightning round. All right. Let's talk a little bit about treatment facilities. Everybody ready? Yep. So we serve hospitals and institutions under the auspices of those two or treatment facilities. 
just as a reminder, so would we take it to a treatment facility that has a van and they come to meetings regularly, they attend your home group, et cetera, maybe you could talk to them there about taking a meeting to them. No, they are coming to outside meetings regularly, right? So an example of a treatment facility we would take a meeting to would be one where they do not have access to regular outside meetings. Not yet, we're almost there, you're close. How do we present ourselves in our relationship with facilities? A, we tell the residents our opinions on treatment methods when they ask. B, we don't tell the residents our opinions on treatment methods, but we make sure the facility itself aligns with our opinions on treatment methods. <laughs> C, we make sure that we are clearly separate from any facility in which we provide services, making sure this is clearly understood by the facility, the residents, and the H&I workers. Or D, we tell the residents in our chairperson materials that we are exactly like all other 12-step fellowships and that we are proponents of the treatment method used at the facility. I think it's the gentleman with the hat on. C, yeah. nailing it, yep. Awesome. We have no opinion, right? No, no opinion on that. What are things you should not do at an initial contact appointment with a prospective facility. A, bring pamphlets, literature, and local meeting schedules with you. D, B, dress appropriately and be courteous. C, discuss our 12 steps and 12 traditions, the H&I handbook, and your local guidelines. Or C, offer to do some counseling on behalf of the facility or educate the staff and residents. <laughs> That's right. D. Right, Did you, you say D? Well, you, you said C twice. Yeah, so okay. just, she meant you. Okay. The D, yes. Just a few more. I'm going to go fast. When we have a question and answer session towards the end of the meeting, what is something we remember? A. Conveying a sense of acceptance can be more beneficial than anything else we do. B, we can always give our opinions on medication and other fellowship if someone asks. C, we should share about how our day is going. D, we are there to tell residents that the best way to clean is to stay in treatment forever. <laughs> oh, money. That's right. Yes. Awesome. All right. Okay, and finally, a couple of, these are specifically for correctional facilities. You ready for it? Yeah. What is a panel presentation meeting format? A, panel members create a short PowerPoint presentation to share. B, panel members each take one aspect of recovery in NA and share on that subject. C, only one panel member shares their experience, strength, and hope. Or D, Members bring samples of different boards and then present on each panel, listing the pluses and minuses of each. That's, that's <laughs> B. B. Boom. Nice. That's it. Awesome. Okay. And the last question. What can we tell them the NA is? NA is a benevolent society. We counsel or educate staff or residents. We are an abstinence-based 12-step program. We provide jobs, housing, money, etc., or letters of reference to judicial system. It was the third one. Yep, you're right. That's awesome. Yay. All righty. So you guys, that was a really quick speed through some of the questions in the H&I Handbook. Here's the thing about the H&I Handbook. It's an amazing resource. Marcus, who's not here, who's our co-chair, would, would be sad if I did not say. 
It is not the Bible. It is suggestion. It is based on our collective experience, strength, and hope. It is requisite that as an area, that area comes up with their personal policy for how they carry meetings into H&I. The only bottom lines are that we stay within the 12 traditions, 12 concepts, and 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous. So this is a great, amazing resource piece of literature. For those who sign up, I'll provide it to you in PDF so that you can access it easily. I'll provide you this game in case you want to play it with your area. Um, but please know it's not the end all be all. Um, you know, the trusted servants who make up your subcommittee, really that group conscience um, is, the, is the greatest thing that we can bring in. So questions outside of I the did, question. I did want to say a little bit more expounded. Yeah. So I've had, I've, we've had people I think say, hey, um, you know, our area policy is, um, is going against the guidelines. I said they are never in conflict policies for the area are never in conflict with the guidelines because the guidelines are a guide. They are yeah. a guide. The policies that the area sets forth, they are what rule. The guidelines are what they're supposed to use to take, create those rules. So never in conflict. Yeah. If they are in conflict, we got a serious problem way beyond anything an H and I can ever handle. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, uh, questions? Okay. Uh, they are, it is fellowship approved. Yes. yes. Yes, it is. Yes. It is fellowship approved, yes. but they are guidelines. Again, guidelines. Yes. Two questions. One question is that how do we get access to that game? She's going to She's provide it. Email address. Yeah. 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 And then secondly, is that the facilities providing literature? What is what is what is the guideline on that? You know, because we are we are purchasing. Well, let me introduce myself first. Arthur M. from the Piedmont region. Hey, Arthur. Hey, Arthur. Hey, hey. Uh, Welcome. About literature, because we are spending a lot of money, especially on the uh, the regular key tag and different things that we're taking, especially that white key tag mm -hmm. that we're taking to. Mm -hmm. versus that little white chip mm -hmm. to those things because a lot of those chips that we're taking and literature that we're taking not to try to diminish anything because a lot of those clients are on a lot of medication and a lot of it is they don't even realize what they're taking when they in, in those centers and we're spending a lot of money on that and we're trying to the cost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. what, what, what kind of suggestions? Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm Sherry Addict, and, hey, Sherry. and I would like to address this. So, our most vital tool for carrying a message is the recovering addict. Mm -hmm. It's not mandatory that you take in literature right. or right. chips. Um, yeah. You know, some facilities don't even allow the chips. Right. Um, what we do want to make sure is that we provide meeting schedules with a helpline number on it for when they're getting released they know where to go um staying clean on the outside pamphlet that is my all-time favorite the very first pamphlet they should get from you um the welcome to na is a good pamphlet your h and i handbook has a list that you can go down and check everything on that list to see what is appropriate to take in an H and I meeting. It's in one of your appendix in the H and I handbook. And you can access that handbook online. Mm -hmm. right. um, the, but it the, has an appendix just for that section see, for literature. And, and that's one of the uh, battles that I'm fighting. Right. Well and the facility if they have a budget, I you can purchase. meet with the facility. It's always recommended in your initial presentation or if you need to redo a meeting with them to say, do you have a budget to purchase literature? Yep. You and know, and a, a lot of them do. And and that's a lot a of them do, place. and they can do that. Jason. And it talks about that in our H and I handbook as well. Jason. Hey, 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 Jason.
we have found over time, and uh, Jason and I share people in as communities, that we work really closely with our PR committee. That's right. And, yes. and whenever we have questions about any functioning uh, within a facility, we work that out, uh, coordinate that with our PR chair. And, yeah. with, and if that doesn't work, we'll go to our regional PR chair, whatever it takes to get to the so we get a better understanding of each facility and how we work real hard when we try as an individual to manage a facility or, 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 or any situation there. If our committee can't figure it out, whether it be key tags, literature, expenses, it's always best to get PR back involved and talk to that facility again and maybe get a better relationship going there where you know, you can reset your boundaries and actually have a, a, a reset the framework of how we the NA message at that facility. Sometimes our meetings, our H9 meetings turn into regular meetings without us meeting for them to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we have to back up and actually start having presentations and treat them like H9. Sometimes yeah. that's the case. So, Arthur, you we, we, were, you at, you, were you at the uh, workshop that I did down there? Okay, I thought you were. I, I, I thought you were. I, I couldn't remember. My brain is going. Yeah, well, I, I know yeah. just what I'm saying, so what, I might need to talk with you offline. Okay. So I mean, yeah, we can t you can talk to any of us at any point in time. Jason is a, is our previous H and I chair, so that's the reason why you know, he's been involved in H and I for as long as I've known Jason. So uh, he's a he's a very good resource here for it as well too. Uh, so we you have a lot of resources that have been involved for a long period of time here. So, but I I I, I, I was trying to remember because we did cover that a bit a little bit in the workshop there, and it was something that. It definitely needs to be covered at, at you know in, a little more in depth. So, uh, Barbara, you had your hand up. I do. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Barbara. Hey, Barbara.